I know, I know all these topics are rushed through, but we just wanted to give you a really quick snapshot of some of these things, and then if it tickles your fancy, you can go off later on and research a little, a little bit more. Uh, okay, now, I've got to get John's rap sheet. Hang on. Uh, it's, the neat, it's the neatest one of the morning, John. Uh, look at that. Right. Must have been a school teacher. <laughs> Joined AHARS in 1992, first licence in 1995. Uh, got his full call, the advanced licence in uh, 1998. Uh, got WIA DXCC in 2003. Between 2010 to 2012, he was the president of uh, the Adelaide Hills Amateur Radio Society. Uh, now, he's scrubbed out, has a famous G5 RV. Uh, he's a member of Bison and WIA, and he, he's the QSL manager for, uh, for AHARS. Oh, and he's written number eight, has a famous G5 RV antenna. And number nine, he's a, he's a nice bloke. Well, that's open to interpretation. And, and, and he's written down he's on QRZ.com. So John's going to give you a bit of a rundown on QSL cards and, um, and the process. So thank you, John. And then we'll break for lunch after that. And believe me, you'll need it. <laughs> OK, thanks, Sir Paul. Thanks for running the show today, too, and giving me a chance to talk about what's been a major part of my hobby since I started. Okay, um, a QSL card is a card of confirmation of a contact, and most of you know this, but those who are new might not. QSL means please reply, or please confirm, or please acknowledge. This uh, is a cartoon, of course, that's from an American cartoonist showing the old days of QSL cards, where some poor blight had to sit down with thousands of cards that came in, and he had to fill them all out by hand, and so on. So that's, the, that's my definition of to QSL. It's used in many different ways. Um, but the QSL card is acknowledging or confirming a contact. Now this is uh, the VK5 EMI QSO log sheet, which I used for many years before I got onto an electronic lock. And I have some copies for those who want to have one. No power is needed to run this. It will never go down, <laughs> um, but where it's handy is if you go bush or something like that where you may not have um, power to spare or your battery might go flat. So I always take one when I go into state um, for whatever contacts I make that are worth recording, which is all of them. That's what the log sheet looks like once uh, my steady hand has filled it out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm probably the neatest writer in the whole whole room, but it does look a bit untidy. <laughs> anyway, I'll just describe a little bit about the sheet. On the right is the comments column, and very often you need to, to make extra comments um, about what you're up to. Down the bottom is another comments area for extra specially interesting things. So that's, that's the, uh, that was the manual sheet. Now I've moved into Logger 32, an electronic database and I'll see if I can enlarge this a little bit so you can read it. So logger 32 you can type in uh, into your computer as you're making the contact and that'll put in the time and the date for you. If you connect your laptop or computer up to your radio, if it's a, if it's a smart radio, it'll put in radio information as well. And you can do sorting and searching of course on an electronic log which is where it wins over manual logs. This is also, whoops, don't do that, John. So this is also from Logger32, and I've been doing some searching. That's why the different colours have come up. Um, a beautiful colour scheme, too. You should see it. It's usually bright red and bright green. It really hurts the eyes, but it shows you the different types of results. In this case, I was looking up QSLs uh, returned, basically. So it's certainly worth moving to, but I still recommend manual login. And the other thing with this, you can add, add um, contacts. QSO means contact. You can add contacts afterwards manually through this little window in this particular software. And down the bottom you'll see this information about QSL management. Uh, EQSL is an online system uh, which I've joined 
and you can receive and send cards through that. They're then virtual QSL cards, uh, but on the screen they look real and you can print out incoming QSL cards. I'll move on a bit. Oh, before I move on to the, the further bit, in eQSL, you really need to, for your contacts to be taken seriously, you need to get this done. You need to prove to the eQSL system that you are a valid ham radio and you have a license. And once you've done that, you get this AG note, authenticity guaranteed. And then that can be used, um, those cards, those contacts can be used for awards. Here's a, a card that you can, I printed out, came through eQSL. When I looked onto eQSL, there's K4 AWM waiting for me to confirm his contact, which I did. Um, and this, as I said, you can print it out or just keep the image on the computer, your choice. But that's a plain Jane card, as you'll notice. Uh, down the bottom is the contact, or the actual details of the contact. That man from Virginia, uh, lots of contacts with Americans in the early days for me, got a lot of fun. And then, um, I'm not an expert here, we have an expert sitting in the front row. We'll talk about Log of the World, which is another electronic system. And as far as I understand, you don't, can't get a QSL, uh, an image, can you get an image? Of it? No, you can't, it just matches contacts. But John BJ will explain that later on. Now we're onto some QSL cards. <laughs> Uh, this is an early, early QSL card in the, in the middle, 1925-ish, A2WT, and you would have seen earlier on the early call signs in Australia started with letter A, then later on it went to VK. Here's a simple QSL card, you can make up your own if you want to, um, and I'll probably start with this, but then I realised that a more attractive card is a better proposition. That was my first QSL card that I made up. And you'll note, and I know it's Paul's done this and others, a bit of Australiana in the bottom corners, and people really enjoy that, and it's worth it. And this was all done, that was all done in Excel. And even this little bit up the top there, it was, from memory, was done in Excel, but the bottom bit I stole off the internet. Uh, here's the BAR car that uh, Paul put together last year. A bit of Australiana, a bit of a hills feel to it. So if you do your own, make up your own be, uh, cards, think about these things to make your card attractive uh, and satisfying for whoever receives your card. This is a card I was working on while Paul <laughs> finally got one out. Um, so Paul's is, is current BAR card, but I'll, I'll show you mine because it's got Australiana in the right. If you've got good eyesight, you can see koala, boomerangs, a galah, not with a radio in his hand, a kangaroo and, and an eagle. So that's, that again gives a nice feel to the car because it's got the Australian, it's got a photograph of the hills and so on. And that looks like Mount Barker. Is that right, Paul? Is that Mount Barker in the background? Uh, I'm Mount Nigel, sorry. Mount Nigel. We'll move on. <laughs> Doesn't matter, it's just that uh, I thought a nice photograph as a background. I've done a few um, cards for BAR for some of our activities. This is one we did back in 2010 in the uh, Radio National Field Day. We ran that from the Eden Hills Primary School just down the road. That was a fun day. Got a few children in to talk on the radio. And those who did got a certificate, which uh, I threw together in a moment of madness. So the kids got that. So National Field Day contest, some stuff I plagiarised from Amateur Radio Magazine, club member over there, um, just bits of pieces like that to encourage people uh, to get involved in amateur radio. Here's a few of the cards, QSL cards, and we're talking hard copy in, at this stage that I've received. This one from Canary Islands, EAATLS, which means it's to do with Spain. Now, this is a photograph of the operator in the Galapagos Islands. <laughs> been in the sun too much, but that's a great thrill getting a card from a, a rare place like that. Now this is one that got my interest in, this came from FO0SAL, which is Marquesas Islands, somewhere in the Pacific, and the operator is the guy with the cap on, we're not too sure, the lady, whatever role was there. Crown. I hope you didn't hear me say that, I'll speak to you afterwards. <laughs> Now this card, and I mentioned about nice cards, a colour card, it opened out. 
And on the back of the card were photographs of him running around the island and the people he met and the local operator and so on. And I enjoyed this card immensely, which is why I encourage people, if you do your own cards, even if you have them printed for you, give them some really nice artwork. Because you really enjoy it, really satisfying. That's the card opened out. And that's the inside of the card when it's opened out. On the left is the story of his expedition to that island, people who helped him and so on. And on the right are the contact details, VK5, EMI, black, 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 whenever that was done back in 1999. A few others I made contact with, Republic of Cape Verde. That's a plain card, but still, still valuable. Uh, somewhere, Madeira, anyone know where that island is? Where they make the cake. <laughs> I thought I was going to have an AIM free a talkie as Steve. <laughs> That's, anyway, CT, the prefix there, suggested to me it's Portugal. And here's another card that's come through EQSL, which I printed out and put in my shoebox. And people, when they get all their cards, they tend to put them in shoeboxes until they get about five shoeboxes boxes full, then they start thinking of other methods. So this is a typical... QSL card, this is mine, that's the back, contact details, that's the front, which you've seen this on the photo, on the front, it's the city of Adelaide, and so on. Um, so anyway, we'll move on. Here's another card from EQSL, and this guy's paid a bit of money into EQSL, he's a bronze member, so he can make up a, a nicer looking card. And my card's a little bit like that now. So that's my card on EQSL. I've actually spent a few bucks, 10 bucks, I think, to become a bronze member. Now that person at the other end gets a nice looking card. This goes through the internet, in case you're not sure of that. It goes through as data, but it prints at the other end as a graphic like that. Now that's the back of a card I made up, printed four to an A4 page, cut them up uh, before I got uh, tired of that and got them printed. And that's the front of my card, which you just saw. Uh, one of the uh, most famous places, it's FD7, is St Helena Island. Uh, so it's a special card there. And uh, I've got the DXCC, which means 100 uh, distance, DX means long distance, uh, 100 um, countries or entities uh, in about 2003. Down here, if you can see that, 125, that means I've got another 25 countries, I'm up to about 150. Now, now, some of you will get this joke and some of you may not. As a, a, a amateur operators get more countries that put pins in the world map. In this case, it's the other way around. <laughs> I dare anyone to do that at home. Oh, that's just a bit <clears throat> a serious piece for a moment. No, nothing to do with DXing, really. Oh, then again, if she doesn't pedal hard enough, you won't be able to DX, maybe. <clears throat> And in this case, this is the old way of doing the curious selling. Somebody would have to uh, fill out all the cards. And in this case, all the cards are ZD7. If you can read it on the cards, St Helena Island, just by coincidence, a very popular island. Um, and if you work from that island, if you go to that island and set up and run a station, you will get hundreds of cards. And that's one way, one case where you might actually prefer electronic systems. The present is for me is like this. I have a manual sheet which I still sometimes use. I have in the background, which you saw a little while ago, the uh, my Logger 32 software, which I prefer to use now, and I just use a fairly conventional computer or laptop. What's the future? Well, part of it will be using you know, iPads and tablets and things like that, and I imagine touch screens and stuff will come soon. We have Logger of the World in the background as well um, as other blogging system screens. And that's sort of the end. How much time have I got left? Two. <laughs> I only asked for how much time is left. <laughs> that's another sort of card you can do at home. Just think about the postage if you do one like that. I do have some, some of the, the blank sheets. I think I mentioned that if you want one to take one. As far as notes, uh, I didn't print off, didn't think to print off extra copies, but I can take notes from you if you want any information. Just fill out the sheet with your name, hopefully your um, and your call sign and your email address. So see me when convenient. Um, I think that's pretty well all of it. But uh, QSLing's been a lot of fun. 
but I guess I have moved on to electronic systems because in the long term um, it's just so much easier and quicker. And finally, QSL cards, how long do they take to go from A to B? They can take months, years. I've seen QSL cards with the contact they refer to as over 12 years old and some of you would have seen older ones. So if you go through a bureau, it's pretty slow but it's cheap. If you post direct, it's faster, still could be a few months, but it's quite expensive. So another reason, well I'm not trying to kill QSL cards because I enjoy them, but another reason to consider uh, going through a login program and through the internet. Any questions? You have 30 seconds. Uh, what's your recommended uh, QSL printer? So, what's the way to order QSL cards from these cases? Well, I went, I went to Abbott's. Actually, see me afterwards, I've got a list of them, okay? Ah, you would. I meant to print out 20 copies of my notes. But they're overseas ones, so if I do read them out, and I know Abbott's was, was fine, local mob, cheaper, there are the overseas ones. Um, I mightn't be able to find it in a 